party of hikers are on the hunt for the perfect wildlife photo. But their dream vacation takes a horrifying turn when a black rhino barrels into a group of tourists. They went from something quite beautiful to something quite, quite insane. But these elusive plant eaters usually run away, not attack. What made this giant unleash its fury? Solving this mystery requires two teams of experts, one in South Africa, the other in the United States. They must uncover the clues and track the signs that will reveal who is the hunter and who is the hunted. Warm on morning, the Perth Brown Lives follows National Park. Hard to us, Barnard Guy walks far. They're hoping against the world's social media creeps. Among the group are the Crozer brothers from Durban, South Africa. Mark turns 34 in just a few days, and Sean is here to help him celebrate. My brother's wife was supposed to go, and, and she couldn't because she just had a newborn baby. Two armed park guides lead the group. They spot a herd of African buffalo on the banks of the White Imphalosi River. We could see many animals coming down to the river, leaving, going backwards and forwards. It was quite a busy morning. They saw a male black nostrils in a nearby fit. People were quite proud and were quite delighted that we were so close to the animal and it was still in this sort of tourist mode where you, you've seen the animal and now you want to take pictures of it. The lead guide knows rhinos are usually wary of people. But this bull is snorting and posturing aggressively. Male rhinos can be more aggressive than females. He tries to scare the endangered animal away. He slapped the butt of his rifle and shouted at the rhino. But the rhino wasn't intimidated by any of that. People didn't believe it was that dangerous. The 3,000 pound rhino charges. I thought I was relatively safe behind this tree. But this behemoth has shone in its sights. He hit me on my, my upper right leg and it felt like a truck hitting me. Tremendous low, fling jaw hot, leaving bloody and blind. Boss isn't there. He didn't see anything. But I was quite aware of the smells and the, the heat and the noises of the animal. It sounded pretty primal. Warning shots have no effect on the enraged animal. It chases Sean, then suddenly turns its sights on his brother, Mark. Dazed and in pain from a direct blow to the chest, Mark struggles to stand. 
the rain isn't done with them yet. It struck him with the base of its horn, fracturing his sternum, cracking his ribs. Then the rhino wheels around and charges another member of the group. The animal was definitely berserk. It was out of control and it was definitely going to kill somebody. The rear guide gets a clear shot and takes it, hitting the rhino in the side. The wounded animal disappears into the bush, leaving Sean bruised and bloody and Mark fighting for his life. The brothers face a grave situation. They're in the middle of one of the largest wilderness reserves in South Africa. Shushlui Imfalozi Park sits in South Africa's northeast region and spans over 96,000 hectares. Once the private hunting ground of Zulu kings, is not a part. Imfalozi is home to a breathtaking variety of wildlife, including Africa's five most sought after and dangerous animals. Lions, leopards, Elephants, Cape Buffalo, and rhinos. Rhinos are massive creatures. They weigh as much as a pickup truck, are fortified with meter long horns, and, and tout at speeds of 40 kilometers per hour. Their defenses have all survived in years. But despite their menacing physique, they are not ill-tempered. That is a myth. These docile plant eaters attack only in extreme and very rare circumstances. They prefer to run away rather than engage in any conflict. And the eco-tourists seemingly did nothing to provoke the creature. So what made this prehistoric giant attack this group of humans? Rowan Plotz studies rhino behavior in Shushlui Imfalosi Park. He joins section ranger Emil Schmidt in the African bush. OK, we're in Infolosi Park where the Crozier brothers are attacked. And if you look around, you can see that there's a lot of black rhino paths. Yeah, I mean, this place is pretty typical of black rhino habitat. Yeah. If you look around more carefully, you can see there's a lot of thickets as well all around. Yeah. Yeah. And that's quite important for black rhino. Yeah, I mean, also where the attack took, took place, the animal was lying up in shade, and it would feel secure in an area like that. Rhinos use this thick vegetation to shelter from the hot sun. But this distinctive environment can be a dangerous place for humans. Another attack in the very same game park reveals why. <laughs> On a hot October morning, a group of contract workers arrive to clear a patch of harmful alien vegetation. But as the men begin their work, they spot a rhino in the area. They decide not to disturb the animal. The rhino notices the humans as well, and apparently leaves the area. With the animal out of sight, the men move in to work. Mandan Kolosi Magubani wanders away from the others and into a thicket to...
The workers find Magubani on the ground, punctured and bloody. A bone-shattering assault by a black rhino, leaving the man in critical condition. In both this attack and the one on the Crozier brothers, the rhinos lay hidden in the thicket. But several factors explain why this rhino attacked Magubani. Rhinos use their advanced sense of smell to determine what other animals are in their vicinity and react appropriately. And one scent in particular triggers an intense alarm response in black rhinos, the smell of humans. This trait is key to their survival. Evolution has equipped the rhino with nearly impenetrable skin, enormous size, and a mighty horn. It fears no predators except one, humans. Many prize the animals for their famous horns. They're used in traditional medicine and as a material for knife handles and statues, making us the number one killer of rhinos. In 1900, Africa's rhinos numbered over one million. Humans reduced them to just over 8,000 animals in less than a century. Today, intense conservation has brought rhinos back from the brink of extinction. The 18,000 African rhinos that now survive have learned to keep their distance from humans. The rhino that attacked Magubani sensed the humans and left the area. But it didn't go far. Male rhinos use fairly consistent routes when patrolling their territory. They mark these boundaries frequently with urine spray and dung piles. Creatures of habit, they often visit the same mud holes to cool off and the same rubbing posts to remove ticks. They spend the hottest hours in preferred ticks, areas of writ from the sun. When Madani went into the bush, he stepped into the safety zone. It's likely that the startled rhino perceived him as a hostile intruder and attacked. Can this territorial reaction explain the attack on Mark and Sean Crozer? We're 30 feet now, and they're at least, what, 100 feet away? Yeah, so which is a little ways off. How far that is? 50, 80 feet there. OK, that's 100 feet. Wow. I mean, in normal circumstances, you wouldn't, I wouldn't expect a black rhino to charge from this distance, no, straight away not. anyway. Although they were in prime rhino territory, the Crozers don't deal. There were 30 years away. The rhino was safe hid in thick cover of bushes. Why would you attack? They went from something quite beautiful to something quite, quite insane. The 1,400-kilo black rhino's attack on Sean and Mark Crozier lasted only moments. But getting the severely injured men to safety could take hours. There was a real sense of danger. The feeling of sitting in, in the bush, I just felt that I was exposed to all sorts of other animals, from lions to whatever else might stumble upon us and see us all on our backs and defeated and then, you know, eat us. Mark is in no shape to hike. His sternum is broken, and he's having trouble breathing. The group in the middle of Willis, kilometers away from medical assistance. 
We needed to get them out of them and attended to. I was, I was incredibly frustrated because the, the rescue party wasn't coming. Investigators trying to determine why the rhino attacked note a key difference between the assault on Mendenclosi Magubani and the Crozier brothers. Magubani was alone. Mark and Sean were in a group. Rhinos are even less likely to charge at a crowd of humans. Investigators turned to another rhino attack in South Africa's Kruger National Park, where the animal also left the security of dense cover to charge a group of tourists. A party of hikers are on a mission to view Africa's legendary big game. Guides Elias Chalky and Dumisani Zwani lead the small party along the riverbed in an area called Crocodile Ridge. But just a few kilometers in, they suddenly get more than they bargained for. Through giant animal thunder toward the group. One of the stampeding rhinos knocks Chucky to the ground, hooks his belt, and drags the man kicking and screaming. Another rhino catches one of the tourists in the upper thigh and flings him aside. Zwani tries to free Chucky from the rhino's hook and slams it with the butt of his rifle. The blow frightens the animal, and it runs off. But there's something different about this attack. This rouse black got home to two species of rouse. Experts in the lab examine the critical differences between them. Jason, here we have the skull of a black rhino. It's clearly a plant eater. Greg Erickson is a paleobiologist at Florida State University. Jason Green is a zoological supervisor at Bush Gardens, Tampa, where he works closely with the International Rhino Foundation. Of course, these animals are classic large browsers. You can tell that from the teeth here. This animal's grinding up its food. Yeah, the black rhinos tend to be browsers, um, and the white rhinos are, are tend to be grazers. And that, that's reflected in the, in the snout. The black rhino has a very tapered snout that they use for, for browsing. Rhinos and elephants are related. Both animals are pachyderms. Black rhinos use their lip like an elephant's trunk for browsing, feeding on taller plants. Both black and white rhinos are actually slate gray. The term to be a mistranslation the word white. Their name refers to white rhinos. But this is just so. White rhinos are more social than their black cousins, often appearing in more herds. Because they have milder and more tolerant temperaments compared to black rhinos, tourists can generally get much closer to white rhinos without incident. So why did this white rhino herd charge the group? Section Ranger Niels Van Vick arrives at the site on Crocodile Ridge to investigate. The experienced ranger quickly spots a sand bed where the rhinos were sleeping in the midday sun. I think this rhino was actually sleeping right in this area here. Rhinos will normally come during midday and will come and lie in the shade here. You can see the scuff marks here of where this rhino was actually getting down and lying down here, resting in the shade. And they heard the people coming up from, from that area. And a closer look reveals why the startled rhinos didn't run away. Dry riverbed here forms a cliff hidden behind thickets. The herd of white rhinos had nowhere to run. 
the only escape route they will have was towards the people and the group. Although the hikers and Kruger faced white rhinos, and a black rhino charged the Crozier brothers in Infolosi, the reason they attacked could be the same. Both sets of rhinos may have smelled the hikers before they saw them, putting the animals on high alert. But the white rhinos were pinned against the steep bank. And had no other choice for group division R tanks. The crow also packed on either right of the now. There are certainly places on the White and Felosi where you have these steep embankments. But the spot where the Crozier brothers were attacked reveals something entirely different. It seemed to be that there was a lot of places that the rhino could get away if it wanted to. The river level here was low and the bank not as steep. Rhino tracks indicated the creatures could move freely to and from the river. The animal that attacked Sean and Mark could easily have moved in the opposite direction. But it didn't. This animal decided to head straight for them rather than choose a safer and you, yeah, option, less yeah. confrontational option. So yeah. continues to make this quite an unusual, unusual case. But there is one trait shared by all rhinos that can trigger a deadly rampage. The black rhino that charged Mark and Sean Crozier behaved very differently than the animals responsible for two other rhino attacks in South Africa's nature reserves. In both the assault on Magubani, the field worker, and that on guide Elias Chalky and his tour group. The rhinos charged through the people to escape the scene. Help! But that wasn't the case on the two brothers. He did follow over and then continue his off. He actually came back and kept circling. After hitting Sean, the rhino had cleared a path and could have run off, but it didn't. Things were going terribly wrong. And I got up and went back around the tree, thinking I was safe. But then he circled around and chased me around the tree again. The animal then changed course and targeted Sean's brother, Mark. Something made the rhino continue its assault. Another incident in Zimbabwe's Matusdana National Park reveals a vulnerability in the great beast that could account for its aggression. Americans Richard and Vanna Henry try in search of the black rhino. We really were trying to find the black rhino. When one of us's book said said black rhinos existed, that you see them now, they'll get good real shots of them. Ten days into their trip, they get their wish. The group rounds a bend and finds a massive black rhinoceros on the trail. The Henrys freeze, only a few meters away. Nick Murray, the lead guide on the safari, instructs the couple to take cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He tries to appear large to scare the rhino away, yeah. but the animal remains on the path, yeah. uncomfortably close to the Henrys. The other guide runs toward the animal, waving his arms to draw the rhino's attention. Richard Henry watches it works too well. Oh, 
the Ryan Herman at the other guy and chased him, chasing him up there. And at that point, Nick yelled at Richard and I to try and back up and get further back in the bush. Richard manages to climb a small tree. But as Vanna backs away. Whether he heard it, I'm not sure, but all of a sudden, he and I were looking at each other. And I kept thinking, just turn around and run away, please. And that's when I remember thinking, there's a tree behind me. I need to get to that tree and get up it. And the next thing I knew, I was up in the air. Vanna lands hard on the ground, wounded and bloody. The guide's warning shots managed to scare the rhino away. Though Vanna Henry recovers from her terror Something triggered this animal to charge. Greg Erickson and Jason Green consider the crucial detail that led the giant to target Vanna Henry. Mrs. Henry was trying to back away and apparently tripped over some branches and snapped one of those. And all of a sudden, the rhino turned and just focused on her. Yeah, you kind of have to put yourself in, in the rhino situation. You come across this animal, it startles him. He's going to protect himself. He, he thinks he has one person in front of him. And then all of a sudden, there's another noise to the side. The placement of their eyes on the sides of their heads gives rhinos poor depth perception, and they're acutely nearsighted. If a human remains motionless downwind, it's very difficult for the rhino to tell where the intruder is. The noise Vanna made as she broke the branch and the couple's attempt to avoid danger put them in harm's way. The Kubrups were also targeted because movement. Sean is the closest to when their first comes within sight of the rhino. He placed himself in the position. Every time we stumble upon some game, that the game would take flight and we would miss it. So I felt it was a good idea to be right behind the ranger so that I could, um, you know, see the game. When the animal charges, the group instinctively reacts. I was one of the first people to re respond and go behind the tree because I, I felt it was dangerous. But his sudden movement catches the animal's attention and draws its charge. And Mark's dash for cover only adds to the rhino's confusion. Chaos. You got movement, 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 and trying to decipher which one is the clear and present danger now. That threat is right then and there, and that's what you're going to address, and you may do it aggressively. This interaction with the rhino also helped explain how the other words inadvertent up the assault on Mark. When the other member of the hiking party maneuver to find the cover, their movement causes the rhino to perceive them as the next threat and draw its attention away from Mark. Their move saves his life. It was just an enormous pain, feeling of, of you know, constricting kind of pain. But um, I was still breathing. I was in one piece. When the rhino wheels toward the Swiss couple, it finally gives the guide a clear shot. He made the decision that it was either the rhino or us. And I'm pretty happy because I was weak. Really but according to Ryan Havier, it's Rowan Plotz, movement alone done a clean attack on the Crow Brothers. They were over 30 meters away from the rhino when it charged. They do pick up a movement, certainly, um, anything up to about 30 meters or so, and they start to uh, might be interested and become, you know, aware of what's happening and come in towards that, that spot, but, but not necessarily trigger an all-out all attack. 
It also doesn't explain why the rhino charged from its protective cover in the first place. Something else caused this rhino to unleash its fury. Three rhino attacks in African game parks cannot be explained by terrain or the animal's nearsightedness alone. But one striking similarity links each of the incidents. Each attack involves humans walking through rhino habitat. Walking safaris have become a daring new style of ecotourism. But the thrill of tourists approaching rare animals in the wild and the prospect of big tips for guides who get their clients up close and personal can lead some to go too far. The quest for a memorable experience is what brought Richard and Vanna Henry to Africa. They went on a small sabot. The attack on Richard and Vanna Henry was not a chance encounter. They had already come across the lac rhino that would later charge them. The group was intentionally stalking the highly endangered animal to observe and photograph it when it attacked. I right, try to get close enough to get a nice photograph and get a good look at him in just natural terrain. Black rhinos are among the rarest animals on Earth. Less than 4,000 remain in the wild, and some tourists, like wildlife paparazzi, may be willing to cross a dangerous threshold to get close to one. Walking safaris seem like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, the parks need the money from the ecotourists, but there's disturbances occurring to the animals as well. But on the Henry's tour, the Rotterbergs group unstung the rhino prior to the attack in Infolozi. They simply stumbled across it. The animal spun around to face us. The guy to the left of me was, was taking pictures. I was looking at the rhino through my binoculars. I think we pretty much disturbed him because as we came around the corner, he was there. It all happened quite quickly. It's unlikely the Crozier party provoked this attack by their presence alone. I, I, I. They were not the only creatures around the rhino that day. Early in the morning, we spotted some buffalo on the other side of the river. And there were a couple in the riverbed it itself. Sometimes, the presence of other animals can affect rhino behavior. The Henrys try to drive to safety, but they have to stop when they come across a different animal. Came around a curb, and there were elephants in the middle of the road, and we came to a very quick stop, scared a young bull elephant. Elephants near as well. Can elephants pose a threat to an adult male rhino? In certain circumstances, they can, and that may have just taken one exit away from that rhino. The rhino may have felt trapped. So he's got the guides, he's got Vanna Henry, and he's got elephants. So that, that may have given him a sense of, of being closed in and not being able to get out of that situation. The rhino's only viable escape route was through the tourists. It's likely to come six against the other hard to take the less attention to the rhino. The site of the grows rubs and follows the ancient It's his trouble between elephant and rhinos. In the 1990s, rogue male elephants in Imphalozi went on a rhino killing spree. Running down, trampling, and goring them to death. Over a 10 year period, elephants killed at least 63 of their pachyderm cousins. Experts tracked the source of the problem to South Africa's reserve, Kruger National Park. In the 1980s, Kruger used a commercial method of trimming elephant populations in the park. They culled the oldest elephants of selected herds and relocated the orphaned young to other parks in South Africa, including Imphalozi, 
the site of the rhino attacks on both the Crozier brothers and the field worker Magubani. But without adult supervision, the young males started acting out. They started to mature a little bit quicker, went into musk quicker, uh, and there was a lot of misplaced aggression, and it seemed to be directed a lot at rhinos. Infilosi has implemented a two-pronged solution, introducing older elephants in the area to restore natural elephant hierarchy and selectively culling the most aggressive young males. As a result, the young male's aggression has remained in check some rhinos. And while both Roger brothers report seeing elephants earlier that morning, they do not see or hearing any elephants in the immediate area prior to the attack. <laughs> if it wasn't the landscape, or the humans, or the other animals that compelled this rhino to charge, maybe there was something different about the rhino itself that sent it on the offensive. In order to find out, investigators first must find the rhino. The black rhino attack on the Crozier brothers seems unstoppable. The giant animal bruises and cuts Sean and breaks Mark's sternum and ribs. The guide must shoot the very animal he works to protect in order to end the ordeal. Even with an aggressive animal, killing is a last resort for the guides. That was an extreme move on his part to try and get it to, to run in another direction, change its mind. The rhino has disappeared into the dense brush. Now the guy must leave his tour group to find the animal. His partner stays behind to watch over the tourists. I once down in the permit and protect us, and I noticed that the bell only had people that left, so I was wondering if that would be enough. Trail blood. Hoofs and broken branches leads the guy to the bridge and to the culprit's dying body. He immediately notices a series of notches in the rhino's ear. Conservationists use ear notch patterns to identify individual rhinos and to monitor rhino population and behavior. These notches are a familiar sight for section ranger Emil Schmidt. If this was a, a rhino's ear, there's this uh, notching system that we, that we have where we use a V-notch system. Okay. And depending on, on the sequence of notches, each notch is allocated a number. And uh, depending on the position of a particular notch, you're then able to identify an individual. And this is how we track. So you're able to match the notches of that animal to your files? To the files. Yeah. And as it turned out, this animal was BRS-555. Black rhino that attacked an animal called BRS-555. Record to this animal was one to below these rangers and scientists. Workers and scientists track BRS-555 for all years. It was known as a healthy male who patrolled the area surrounding the White and Filosi River. Thousands of tourists visited Infolozi during those 13 years, and this rhino never attacked anyone. Territorial argument over a space, and this animal appears to have lost. Male black rhinos are territorial animals. They prefer not to occupy the same areas, and seldom stray too far from their established routes. When they do cross paths, Males defend their territory with vocalizations, bluff charges, and sometimes combat. Black rhino are to death more often than any other. This was not headed to you, it was paying for males and it had females in that. If you think of males, well now I'm really fighting it. For this male, particular male, his behavior is different from it, not yet.
Would such an individual be uh, more likely to be agitated by human intruders? Oh, I think so. You know, this animal was totally removed out of their comfort zone. They're injured. And then all of a sudden, there's something threatening them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. That would be a very shaky area to be in. And I think that's what happened here. I think these, these people, unfortunately, came across the wrong rhino at the wrong time. How much pain, disorientation, and vulnerability led this rhino to charge a perceived threat when Norman would have simply retreated in the opposite direction. This act of preservation led the humans to react in self-defense as well. Obviously, the idea is not to kill a black rhino, particularly such an endangered animal. But uh, I mean, I mean, in this case, there was lives threatened. The guys did what they had to do yeah. um, because this rhino was not going to cease its attack. Despite his near fatal experience, Mark Crozier still has a deep love of the South African wilderness. I think it's probably the most important task that, that we have as a human race is to preserve the wild places and the wild There's a huge therapeutic quality to being in nature, spending time in nature. So it's obviously you know, present. I think it's, it's a risk, but it's a minimal risk. It's a risk worth taking. The thrill of chasing game is a powerful lure. And for some, bringing home a close-up photo of these amazing creatures only validates the experience. But when we step foot in a land where big game rule, the tables may turn, and the hunter becomes the hunted. argument over a space and this animal appears to have lost. Male black rhinos are territorial animals. They prefer not to occupy the same areas and seldom stray too far from their established routes. When they do cross paths, males defend their territory with vocalizations, bluff charges, and sometimes combat. Black rhinos are to death more often than any other this was not headed to the it was paint from males and it had a female male still now in it. This male, particular male, his behavior is different from it. Not yet. Would such an individual be uh, more likely to be agitated by human intruders? Oh, I think so. You know, this animal was totally removed out of their comfort zone, they're injured, and then all of a sudden there's something threatening them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. That would be a very shaky area to be in. And I think that's what happened here. I think these, these people, unfortunately, came across the wrong rhino at the wrong time. How much pain, disorientation, and vulnerability led this rhino to charge a perceived threat when Norman would have simply retreated in the opposite direction? This act of preservation led the humans to react in self-defense as well. Obviously, the idea is not to kill a black rhino, particularly such an endangered animal. But uh, I mean, I mean, in this case, there was lives threatened. The guys did what they had to do yeah. um, because this rhino was not going to cease its attack.
Despite his near fatal experience, Mark Crozier still has a deep love of the South African wilderness. I think it's probably the most important task that, that we have as a human race is to preserve the wild places and, and the wild species that we live with. There's such a huge therapeutic quality to being close to nature and spending time in nature. The thrill of eating game is a powerful one. And for some, bringing home close photos of these amazing creatures only validates the experience. But when we step foot in a land where big game roar, the tables may turn. And the hunter becomes the hunted. They're hoping against the world's most amazing creeps. Among the group are the Crozer brothers from Durban, South Africa. Mark turns 34 in just a few days, and Sean is here to help him celebrate. My brother's wife was supposed to go, and, and she couldn't because she just had a newborn baby. Two armed park guides lead the group. They spot a herd of African buffalo on the banks of the White Imphalosi River. We could see many animals coming down to the river, leaving, going backwards and forwards. It was quite a busy morning. There's a male black nostrils in a nearby pit. People were quite proud and were quite delighted that we were so close to the animal and it was still in this sort of tourist mode where you, you've seen the animal and now you want to take pictures of it. The lead guide knows rhinos are usually wary of people. But this bull is snorting and posturing aggressively. Male rhinos can be more aggressive than females. He tries to scare the endangered animal away. He slapped the butt of his rifle and shouted at the rhino. But the rhino wasn't intimidated by any of that. Are fortified with meter-long horns and, and tout at speeds of 40 kilometers per hour. Their defenses have allowed to survive in years. But despite their menacing physique, they are not ill-tempered. That is a myth. These docile plant eaters attack only in extreme and very rare circumstances. They prefer to run away rather than engage in any conflict. And the eco-tourists seemingly did nothing to provoke the creature. So what made this prehistoric giant attack this group of humans? Rowan Plotz studies rhino behavior in Shushlui Imphalosi Park. He joins section ranger Emil Schmidt in the African bush. OK, we're in Infolosi Park where the Crozier brothers are attacked. And if you look around, you can see that there's a lot of black rhino paths. Yeah, I, I mean, this place is pretty typical of black rhino habitat. Yeah. If you look around more carefully, you can see there's a lot of thickets as well all around. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's quite important for black rhino. Yeah, I mean, also where the attack took, took place, the animal was lying up in shade and it would feel secure in an area like that. Rhinos use this thick vegetation to shelter from the hot sun. But this distinctive environment can be a dangerous place for humans. Another attack. of hikers are on the hunt for the perfect wildlife photo. But their dream vacation takes a horrifying turn when a black rhino barrels into a group of tourists. They went from something quite beautiful to something quite, quite insane. But these elusive plant eaters usually run away, not attack. What made this giant unleash its fury? Solving this mystery requires two teams of experts, one in South Africa, the other in the United States. They must uncover the clues and track the signs that will reveal who is the hunter and who is the hunted. Warm on morn in the Perth Broadlands follows National Park. Hard to us, Barnard walks far, fracturing his sternum, crying his ribs. Then the rhino wheels around and charges another member of the group. The animal was definitely berserk. It was out of control and it was definitely going to kill somebody. The rear guide gets a clear shot and takes it hitting the rhino in the side. The wounded animal disappears into the bush, leaving Sean bruised and bloody, and Mark fighting for his life. The brothers face a grave situation. They're in the middle of one of the largest wilderness reserves in South Africa. Shushlui Imphalozi Park sits in South Africa's northeast region and spans over 96,000 hectares. Once the private hunting ground of Zulu kings, does not start in part. Imphalozi is home to a breathtaking variety of wildlife, including Africa's five most sought after and dangerous animals. Lions, leopards, elephants, Cape buffalo, and rhinos. Rhinos are massive creatures. They weigh as much as a pickup truck. People didn't believe it was that dangerous. The 3,000-pound rhino charges. I thought I was relatively safe behind this tree. But this behemoth has Sean in its sights. He hit me on my, my upper right leg, and it felt like a truck hitting me. Tremendous low, fling jaw hot, leaving bloody and blind. Boss is there. Can't see anything. But I was quite aware of the smells and the, the heat and the noises of the animal. It 
sounded pretty primal. Warning shots have no effect on the enraged animal. It chases Sean, then suddenly turns its sights on his brother, Mark. Dazed and in pain from a direct blow to the chest, Mark struggles to stand. Orano isn't done with him yet. It strikes him with the base of its horn, 